Um, my question is to the Minister for Education. Minister, uh, ANMF Tasmania has added its voice to the growing number of teachers, parents and medical professionals calling for our schools to be closed. Uh, while it's the case that children often don't get sick with COVID-19 uh, and don't show symptoms, uh, they can still spread the virus uh, to families and to vulnerable family members. Social distancing can't work properly in a school situation. Uh, children don't understand it, can't internalise it, and um, often and, and travel to school on crowded buses. Uh, and it's fearsomely difficult to enforce um, effective hand hygiene in a school environment for infection control. So rather than waiting for to close schools until Tasmania is much further advanced in the stage of the epidemic, which is tragically what has happened in the UK, will you act to protect Tasmanians and close schools now? Uh, as the ANMF has said, you can ensure special arrangements for the schooling of children of healthcare workers to make sure that they can stay and be schooled so parents can go in, be, remain in the workforce. So will you extend the Easter holiday period by two weeks either side for at least six week break closure? Thank you. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and, and I thank the honourable member for her question. And of course, uh, we recognise uh, that there is a very understandable uh, concern and anxiety uh, right now within our school communities. And we are doing everything we can to ensure that the most current advice, advice is communicated to schools uh, and families. Of course, the health and safety of staff and students is as the Premier has uh, said, our top priority. We are taking a precautionary approach in implementing measures in public schools on advice from the Australian Health Protection Principal Committee, which is the key decision-making committee for health emergencies. It is comprised of all state and territory chief health officers and is chaired by the Australian Chief Medical Officer. The Education Department is working very closely with the public health to support schools and students and to ensure the right information is communicated in relation uh, to coronavirus. The situation is constantly evolving, as you would appreciate, and we will continue to take expert advice and we will respond accordingly. As the Premier has said, if there was a confirmed case at a school, it would close course for appropriate cleaning. The importance of education and continuing learning is also a priority. We do not know how long our state will be dealing with this issue. It could go on for some time. And remaining focused on the importance of routine and normality is beneficial, of course, also for the mental health and wellbeing of our students. We have also distributed fact sheets on how to talk to young people about the coronavirus. And we're in close contact with other sectors of education. And I have met uh, with uh, all sector heads uh, yesterday uh, via telephone conference so we can keep those communication channels open and support uh, each other in that sense. Precautionary measures have been introduced into our public schools this week to reduce exposure and lower the chance of spreading coronavirus. The Premier has outlined a number of those measures this morning. The restriction on activities, as the Premier outlined, will be in place until further notice and, of course, will be regularly reviewed. I have also written to all principals about the importance of supporting good hygiene practices to limit the spread of coronavirus, and this means, of course, ensuring strict hand-washing protocols are in place. On uh, your question around hygiene, of course, schools have been advised that hard surfaces in classrooms, such as door handles, keyboards and desks, should be regularly disinfected. Hand washing and appropriate cleaning are top priorities at our school sites. The Department of Education has contracts established for the supply of washroom products, and this includes soap, which is supplied in all bathrooms. The COVID-19 coordination unit has been set up within the Department of Education and has the responsibility for ensuring all schools have access to essential supplies such as soap and hand sanitizer. Support is being provided to schools to ensure that orders and adequate supplies are in place. In fact, there is, of course, daily monitoring occurring, as you would appreciate. I understand that yesterday there were eight issues uh, relating to soap or hand sanitizer products, 
and all of those issues were resolved. The department is also exploring avenues to access more product, and this includes a discussion uh, with a local business, not normally in the production of hand sanitizer, another product who has offered uh, to dedicate a proportion of their production time to manufacturing hand sanitizer to a World Health Organization standard. These discussions are in the early stages, but it is a good example of the innovation occurring to ensure essential supplies can be maintained and adaption uh, by industry. And I welcome and I thank uh, all uh, businesses and the one that I have just mentioned, uh, which I won't name uh, as yet, uh, for thinking about how they can support our community at this very difficult time. Advice from public health is that the most effective way to reduce the spread of COVID-19 is by washing hands with soap and water. Alcohol-based sanitizers are not as effective in reducing the spread of COVID-19 as washing hands with soap and water, and that's being repeated within our schools. Of course, uh, schools are being encouraged to promote good hand and respiratory hygiene and have been provided with information to distribute to parents and the school community. And the department continues to be guided by public health on the very best preventative uh, measures. Cleaning of school sites. The appropriate cleaning of school sites, of course, as you'd appreciate, again, a very top priority, Madam Speaker. I understand that schools are today being told to ramp up cleaning and the department does have relief cleaners that can be utilised as needed. <laughs> schools have been advised to follow the Australian Government Department of Health advice to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And the department has also met with representatives of United Voice to discuss requirements. And I want to thank the very good discussions with United, United, Workers United Workers Voice. United, United Workers, Workers Union, Union, they changed last year. United Workers Union. It's all right, you got it. Uh, notwithstanding the name change, uh, I thank uh, the Send very good merch. collaborative uh, arrangements that are in place with the Department of Education, and I thank their members and their union representatives uh, who have agreed to send out further advice this morning to cleaners about prioritising the cleaning and disinfecting of hard surfaces. Uh, it is terrific to see uh, the great collaboration uh, across all. Uh, school sites um, and uh, sectors, if I can put it that way, and indeed uh, key stakeholders uh, within our school communities. And that, of course, includes uh, the United Workers Union, Union uh, as well. There is very good uh, communication between sectors of education, as I have said. Uh, yesterday uh, was an opportunity where I could lead a discussion uh, with uh, the key representatives of the independent schools, uh, Catholic schools, uh, and of course our uh, public school led by our secretary, uh, Tim Bullard. Uh, they are all very collaborative discussions. Uh, we're sharing ideas and indeed uh, further ideas on how we can also utilise existing with resources uh, within our school communities uh, to also ensure that we have the most consistent messaging as well. And I recognise that as Minister for Education, I'm responsible for all three sectors of education, uh, albeit independents and Catholics have their own governance arrangements. And so they are looking uh, to their Minister for Education and indeed our public school administration uh, for uh, guidance in this respect as well. And we want to ensure that irrespective of sector, uh, that there is a consistent approach across those sectors when it comes to all matters uh, relating uh, to the very challenging time at this moment. Uh, the message that I would like to also send to all our staff within all our schools right across Tasmania is a humble thank you. Uh, we know that this is a very uh, challenging time uh, for uh, all our staff, and there is an increased anxiety uh, amongst our school communities, Madam Speaker. I'm in regular contact uh, with our school communities and direct contact with teachers who are reflecting some of these challenges. And it's a time when we, we always thank uh, our educators, our support staff, and our school leaders uh, in good times uh, for the work they do. Uh, but these are unique times and very challenging circumstances and my heartfelt thanks for the work yeah, that they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah.